Well, welcome to Ancient Asian Legends. I'm your host, Mei Li Soon. Previously, Guan Yin and her disciple, Hui An, set forth on a quest to the east in search of a true seeker of scriptures. Along their journey, they encountered Sandy, Pigsy, the white dragon horse, and Wukong, offering aid to ease their burdens and steer them toward redemption. But who is this mysterious scripture seeker? And when will they appear? Without further ado, let's dive into today's story. Chapter 16, A Scholar's Misfortune on the Way to His Post. Guan Yin and Muja arrived in Chang'an, the capital of the Tang Empire, to find the seeker of the scripture. In the grand city of Chang'an, Emperors had established their reigns since the Zhou, Qin, and Han dynasties. Adorned with beautiful flowers and surrounded by flowing rivers, the city stood as a renowned and magnificent place. During the 13th year of Emperor Taizong's reign, known as the Zhengguan era, the empire thrived in peace. Nations paid tribute from all corners of the land, acknowledging his supremacy. Emperor Taizong sought the most talented individuals in the country to serve his empire. He decreed that all scholars, regardless of their military or civilian status, who excelled in the three levels of literary examinations, should travel to Chang'an to take the imperial exam. When this proclamation reached Haizhou, a man named Guang Rei saw the notice. He promptly instructed his servant to pack his belongings and bid farewell to his mother before setting off for Chang'an. Upon his arrival, Guang Rei eagerly joined the competition. With exceptional skill, he aced the exams, earning high praise. In the palace examination, the Tang Emperor himself honored him with the prestigious title of Top Scholar. Guangrei proudly rode through the streets on horseback for three days, basking in the jubilant celebration of the entire city. He unexpectedly arrived at Prime Minister Yin's gate. The Prime Minister had a daughter named Wen Jiao, who had not yet married. She was holding a ceremony, throwing an embroidered ball from a decorated balcony to choose a husband. As Chen Guangrei passed by, the young lady saw his outstanding appearance and recognized him as the newly appointed top scholar. Delighted, she threw the ball which landed perfectly on his black hat. Immediately, the sound of flutes and strings filled the air and dozens of maids descended from the balcony, leading Guangrei's horse and escorting him into the prime minister's residence to marry Wen Jiao. The Prime Minister and his wife promptly entered the hall and called for the guests to commence the wedding ceremony, giving their daughter to Guang Rei. After bowing to the heavens, the couple bowed to each other and then to her parents. The Prime Minister ordered a feast to be prepared, and they celebrated joyously throughout the night. The couple then retired to their bridal chamber, hand in hand. Emperor Taizong appointed Chen Guangrei as the governor of Jiangzhou and ordered him to prepare for his departure. Guangrei thanked the emperor and returned to the prime minister's residence to discuss with his wife. They bid farewell to her parents and set off together for Jiangzhou. Leaving Chang'an, Guangrei decided to first visit his home and bring his mother along. His mother, Madame Zhang, was overjoyed and quickly prepared for the journey. After several days of travel, Madame Zhang fell ill. She said to Guang Rei, I'm not feeling well. Let's stay here for two days so I can recover. Guang Rei agreed. The next morning, he saw a man in front of the inn selling a golden carp. Guang Rei bought the fish for a string of coins, intending to cook it for his mother. But he noticed the carp blinking and said, They say blinking fish and snakes are not ordinary creatures. He asked the fisherman, Where did you catch this fish? I caught it in the Hong River, 15 miles from here. Guang Rei decided to release the fish back into the river. He returned to the inn and told his mother about it. Madame Zheng said, Releasing the fish was a good deed. It makes me very happy. 
We have stayed here for three days, and I must hurry to my post. Mother, are you well enough to travel tomorrow? I'm still unwell, and the heat on the road might worsen my condition. Rent a room here for me and leave some money. You and your wife should go ahead and come back for me when it cools in the autumn. Guang Rei and his wife agreed, rented a house, left money for Madame Zhang, and then continued their journey. The journey was arduous, traveling by day and resting by night until they finally reached the Hong River Ferry. There, Liu Hong and Li Biao, the boatmen, rowed to the shore to meet them. Unfortunately, fate had destined Guang Rei to encounter these villains. Guang Rei ordered his servant to load the luggage onto the boat. As he and his wife boarded, Liu Hong's eyes fixated on Lady Yin. Her face was as radiant as the full moon. Her eyes sparkled like autumn waves, her mouth was like a cherry, and her waist was slender like a willow. Truly, she possessed the beauty that could make fish sink and birds fall, a face that could outshine the moon and shame the flowers. But Liu Hong had bad intentions and teamed up with Li Biao. They rode to a desolate spot, and at midnight they heard the servant and Guang Rei and pushed them into the river. When Lady Yin saw what happened to her husband, she tried to throw herself into the water, but Liu Hong grabbed her. He threatened. If you listen to me, everything will be fine. If not, I'll hurt you. How will Lady Yin decide at this life or death moment? And how is she related to our seeker of the scripture? Subscribe and find out next week on Ancient Asian Legends. Today's episode, based on Wu Cheng En's 1592 classic Journey to the West, was adapted and translated by Mei Li Soon, featuring original music by Background Music Lab and Studio Columna. If you like today's episode, please share it with a friend. What will Lady Yin choose in this life or death moment? What fate awaits Guang Rei? And how do their stories intertwine with our enigmatic scripture seeker? Subscribe now and uncover the answers in the next episode of Ancient Asian Legends. Until then, take care and stay enchanted.